Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create financial reports using R Markdown. More specifically, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create an income statement using data from FinHub. We can create tables such as the one you're seeing on your screen right now with the full values formatted with commas and dollar signs. We can create a short form where we have billions, millions, and thousands as a separator. Once you have this table created, it'll be much easier to make calculations. And what I did for this very last table is create an income statement based off of the percentage of total revenues. You can use the script to find a similar approach for the other financial statements. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. As always, we're gonna start off by requiring some packages. I'm also gonna source my functions to get data from FinHub, which is this script here and I'm gonna be using the Get Financials wrapper. If you're unfamiliar with the script, I provided the details in the FinHub tutorial, so I'm not gonna be going over this here. If you wanna use your own data, it will also work, so long as you grab the right values. So in the script, all you need to enter is your API key here. And once we source those functions in, the first thing I'm gonna be doing is getting the quarterly statements and the annual statements for Tesla. I'm gonna combine the two. And if we take a look at Stockfin, this is what the data looks like. So I added this column called rep, which will make it easier to subset the data. And what we're gonna subset in the script is the income statement. So back in our script here, you'll see that the very next line is we're subsetting for the income statement only. Now, after we subset our income statement, we need a summary table. So I'm gonna be extracting the values for each of the reporting periods. For example, for sales, I'm gonna grab the value where the concept is equal to Tesla automotive sales revenue. You may need to look at the financials to match the data, but if we take a look at the income statement, the cool thing is that most of these values, at least for me, appear to be in order. So I'm grabbing the concept for the automotive sales revenue and we see that that value is 1887. And if we take a look at the current financials, we see that it matches this very first value. Now you will need to grab the correct concept for the specific company that you're looking up. And if you're unfamiliar, you can click on these values and you'll see that the tag will look like or be similar to this one online. Now I went line by line and I extracted each of those values. So I'm gonna be passing in my income statement, I'm gonna group by end date, and I'm gonna be using reframe to extract those values. So once you iterate and extract all the values that you need, it'll get saved in a formatted table. Now I did need to calculate the basic and diluted earnings per share because the value it returned was not correct. So keep an eye out for that and I'll show you what IS table looks like in case you're using your own data. So it should look similar to this where we have the reporting period and the different tags for columns. Once your data looks like this, we can go ahead and go to the next step. Now to create the long form financial, I'm gonna pass in that table and I'm gonna convert the values if they're numeric to dollar format using scales and transposing that table. So I want the column names to be the reporting dates. I'm gonna be dropping the first row since that contains the dates. I'm gonna make sure this is converted as a data frame. I'm gonna remove the dollar sign from the number of shares outstanding. And for each of the columns that you saw in the previous table, these will get returned as row names now since we transposed the table. So what I did was change the names to make it look more presentable. Once you make these changes, we can go ahead and create the report table. So we're gonna pass in that table. We're gonna add a caption. The alignment is R for right, C for center, and L for left. I'm gonna be using Cable Classic to create that table. We can also format the rows and columns using column spec or row spec. So here I have this specific row and I'm adding a background color. For the H line, even though it's set to true, it doesn't create that border underneath that I was looking for. Perhaps I'm using it wrong. For the columns, I want the width to be one inch for these specific columns. And for the pack rows, this will group certain rows and label them. So for line 111, I'm gonna group rows one through five as revenues. And you see that I have inserted the appropriate row numbers for each specific group. And then finally, just show the table. Now the next section is basically the same thing. All I really did was change the scales. So this specific line will convert each numeric variable depending on the number of zeros and will use billions or millions depending on the number. Everything else stayed pretty much the same. We did not have to format the number of shares outstanding since this will get grouped by the suffix in line 127. So I'm using the same number of rows. So I just copied the row names from the block above and did not make any changes for this table. And we'll see that the presentation now shows billions or millions and everything else looks correct. Now to get the percentages, what we need to do is divide everything by the total revenue. There might be a simple way to do this, but what I did here was grab the concepts and divide it by the total revenue for each of these values. 
So there might be a better way to do this. Maybe we should return the values and then divide everything by the revenue. And after we extract these values, we're gonna format these to percentages and transpose our table. We're gonna do the same formatting we did for the other two blocks where we fixed the row names and return this as a data frame. Now for this specific block, I excluded the number of shares outstanding and the earnings per share since these will not get divided by the total revenue. So just make sure you delete those. And then we just return the table using the same formatting for the previous two tables. And now everything will get returned as percentages. Well guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.